Welcome to the closing beat, everybody. Happy, happy Friday. Hope you're having a good day here so far. Are you, are you having a good day? If you're having a good day, what, what happened? <laughs> What'd you do today that was so good? Hey, this is a quick show that we do called The Closing Beat. Uh, just a fun sort of update to go over the stock market, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And some days we've got to bring you the ugly. Today would be one of those days. We'll cover all of that, of course. We're also playing a game. It's called Guess the Dow. Uh, you can go to the bottom right-hand corner of your page. Submit your guess. Where do you think the Dow will close next week? Take your best shot there. Um, believe it or not, we have a winner. So uh, our winner this week is Lindy B. She's already been emailed there. Her guess of 25621 uh, was her guess. And uh, she was the closest without going over. One of our clients, Mariella L, will say, uh, that was her, her uh, uh, that's Mariella, right? Her closest guess, uh, she was second uh, place, 25600. Unfortunately, there's no prize for second place. Um, and then Lakeisha was really close. She guessed 25, what did she guess? 25,640, but she just went over there. Uh, she was in the lead until the last, well, little bit there of the day. Uh, but let me see what we have here. How many more people guessed lower? Actually, a lot of people guessed lower. So you had almost a 50-50 split of people that guessed that the Dow would finish lower than where it currently is and higher. So very impressive there. So congratulations, Lindy B. You win the $100 gift card. You just reply back with your uh, address. Where should we send the money to? And uh, thanks for playing. All of you that play the game there, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, we've learned a lot about you guys and your guesses and everything. So let's talk about the stock market here. Um, did, did you look at the stock market today? <laughs> I got a few calls from friends that never look at the market, but whenever something they hear on the radio, they're like, oh, what, what's going on, man? I'm like, now you care? We don't talk about this for months, and now you care? Anyways, uh, the Dow was lower by 623, 75 on the S&P, and 239 on the NASDAQ. I told you it would have a wild day today, so I hope you got your sleep and you were prepared for this. Really, really truthfully, a wild day. Not just what happened at the end of the day, but check this out. We had, to start the day, we were basically up 100 points pre-market on the Dow. Everything was fine. China comes out and says, hey, we're going to put tariffs on the uh, $75 billion worth of stuff that you guys send over to us. Well, the markets fell 180 points off the high. So if you're following the Dow, we were up 100. We erase all the 100, go another 180 lower. Uh, and, you know, we kind of have a negative start to the day. Then we get uh, Chairman Powell, who speaks there at uh, 10 o'clock, who just basically says, hey, we got you. We'll do whatever it takes to keep the market going. You know, we're, we're basically where we stand. We have no real decisions at the moment, but uh, we'll keep you posted. The markets were okay with that. We had a 250-point rally off the lows. Up 100, down 180, up 250, all ready to start the day, and it wasn't even like 10, 12, right, in the morning, Eastern time there. Then Trump comes out, stirs the pot a little bit. He tells U.S. companies, hey, you guys need to start making other plans. Uh, we suggest you move out of China and go somewhere else. Wasn't the idea that they wanted people to move to the U.S.? Why would you tell them move elsewhere? Wasn't the whole idea that we'll tariff the bejesus out of China and then people will want to move their production back to the U.S.? What happened to that? Where'd that go? All of a sudden, we just sort of lost that one there. Anyways, the Dow basically falls from our new highs, 820 points lower, which ends us to the day, 623.34. So there's your wild swing for the day. Um, he also tweeted out that the Fed does nothing again. And uh, that one was a bit of an embarrassment, I think. I wish he'd, he'd probably wish he could take that one back. Uh, the Fed wasn't supposed to do anything today. This was not like a rate decision meeting. This was not a policy meeting. It was not even like, uh, hey, what do you guys think we should do kind of meeting. It's just a gathering. Just like you guys work in your own little industries there and you have annual conferences or get togethers and things and you just sort of go about your day. You talk, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? All right, what do you think about this you know, job or whatever? Uh, that's what this was. This was not supposed to be a rate decision. So under no circumstance was Wall Street or all of us expecting any decision from the Fed, uh, and yet he tweeted out, the Fed does nothing again. I don't get that one, which makes you wonder, why didn't somebody whisper in his ear, hey man, uh, you know, they're not supposed to do anything today, don't, don't tweet that out. Uh, Larry Kudlow also makes you feel bad for him, like, he's supposed to know this stuff, I just have a feeling he took the day off or something. He was out earlier in the morning saying they would go back to China and, and negotiate, I bet that's out the window now. Anyways, a little bit of drama today. So that drama wiggles the markets around and at the end of the day, basically this is what happened. As soon as that tweet came out and he said all that stuff, the markets just plummeted, right? And then stopped. It was kind of like everybody said, oh, well, have a great weekend. I'm out of here. I'm not gonna guess what's supposed to happen over the weekend. And think about that emotionally. Like, 
Who was going to say, oh, the markets fell today. I'd like to buy that going into the weekend. And as this whole new sort of bomb gets dropped on us, nobody. And it was kind of funny because if you watch like, uh, what was the CNBC, they, um, you know, the anchors are sitting there and you can see back on, on the floor of the stock exchange. And there's like one guy doing this. Just kind of walking around. He's like, oh, this is a cool place, right? There was nobody else really there. They all just gave up and went home for the weekend. And so about lunchtime today, I'm like, well, you know what? I keep a little uh, beach scooter here at the uh, warehouse. I'm just going to go for a ride because nothing's going to happen in the market. I had zero fear that we were going to bounce and we'd miss something or we'd fall even further. So um, just a real low volume for the rest of the day. And uh, that's basically the day in a nutshell. Uh, wow. Action, action, action. If you happen to be uh, sort of following along there. Let's go ahead and uh, start digging through some of this stuff here. Do you mind? Let's do it. All right, so if we go over to the Dow, you got the Dow lower back on the day. We're still inside this range. We've been talking about this range on all the major indices, really. I'll just, I'm going to leave that 10% line down there for you. Been there for about a week and a half now. Talking about from highs to down here would be a 10% drop in the market. We have yet to have a 10% drop this year in the market. We're supposed to have at least one of those every 12 months. It, well, this one sort of counts at the moment, but in 2019, we haven't had a drop of 10%. So... Without telling you what to do, I'm just going to say I'm going I'm to leave that there, right there. Right now, we're about 6% off the highs. We're down about 1% for the week. So all in all, like for the week, it's kind of a wash. We lost 1%. It's not really that big of a deal. You guys see that we're stuck inside of that range. So not too big of a deal there. The bigger losers in the Dow ha oh, happen to be Apple. Uh, they're going to be impacted by the new China tariffs there, whether they like it or not. You got 4.5% down uh, on the day for Apple. I believe that was your biggest loser. Intel was also in the mix. The chips, uh, they're in trouble because, uh, well, chips get imported to China. China doesn't have any chips. And so Intel uh, at about a 4% loss on the day. IBM's just a great lesson. I, I'm not like a, you know, hey, told you so, you know, you know sort of guy I like to tell you ahead of time. We've been sort of talking about IBM to show that relative weakness. Uh, we focused on UNH to show like you got a relatively weak stock. If there's even a hint of weakness in the overall market, those stocks get hit really hard. You got to be able to spot that if you're an active trader there. IBM, we pointed out here over the last couple of days, relatively weak in the Dow. Any weakness in the Dow, you'd expect that sucker to fall a little bit lower. It's just a great lesson. Today down three and a half percent, all because what happens? People go, okay, if I want to bet against the market here, what stocks are already weak and showing me that they're already weak? So I'm just sharing that one with you. I think Boeing was the only positive one in the Dow. Yeah, it was the only one that was higher on the day in the Dow. It was a lot higher to start the day, but closed below the 200-day moving average. That's a half a percent lower on the day on Boeing. People still positive, excited about that one, getting that 737 max back up in the air. You had an analyst yesterday say it should be about four to six weeks. You had Boeing yesterday say, we're going to start ramping up produc production in anticipation of this happening. They're all just trying to start moving forward, you know, put this all behind us as sad as it was and um, just kind of get things going there. So that's what you have there in the NASDAQ still inside this range, right? A little bit weaker today because a lot of tech names are in the NASDAQ. I'll leave the 10% line down here. It's right basically at the 200 day moving average. Um, Intel, I'm sorry, Intuit was one of the only positive stock, but let's call it the only positive gainer on the day because the only other gainer was 0.05%. So basically a penny and a half uh, kept it positive, but into it higher by three and uh, three point three percent today. Uh, basically, earnings. Uh, they reported um, a loss, but it was less than expected. Guidance was everything as it was expected. People were pretty happy with that. The stock, uh, well, it started higher, but did succumb to a little pressure there in the overall markets. Um, Alexion. We talked about this one yesterday. The big move on the idea that um, Amgen was going to buy them for seventy forty-five billion dollars, I think. Um, and today they, there was a report that said that deal's probably not going to happen. It's maybe a little bit further away than we thought. The stock reversing all of yesterday. This is why I don't mess with the biotech stocks, right? These are tough stocks, man. This is, you've got to really hang on tight if you're interested in these. So I am not. I try to stay away from them. Uh, microchip, that's one of your chips there hit uh, in uh, the NASDAQ, one of the weaker areas. That was down 5.5%. Basically, all the chip names, uh, if you want to look at like AMD, lost 7.5%. Micron Technologies was down on the day 4%. Uh, just some weakness across the board there in the chip uh, space. So kind of understandable there. In the S&P 500, where it's just a more perfect looking range. So you got these highs here, right about that 294. If you're using the SPY, 282 on the downside there. Uh, so look, I mean, S&P 500 is down 5.73% off the highs. Let's call it 5.75, down about one and a third percent on the week. So 
week over week, it's kind of like, all right, it's another losing week. That sort of is a bummer, I guess. But um, you look at the day and you think, holy cow, that's, that's kind of a disaster. If you look at the whole week, yeah, just still stuck in that range. You, you try to find something to get excited about, you can't do it. And that's the problem right here too, by the way, is you can't really get excited yet about a discount. We haven't seen it. Right? It's maybe in the works now, but it's not really time to get excited about a discount. You can't get excited about the markets going higher because we know we have that ceiling overhead that's holding us back. And so because of that, it sort of leaves you wanting, right? It leaves me like excited at, about the possibilities, but I, I don't see any thing on the horizon to say, I'm going to get a really nice discount. I'm going to get that 10% discount. Uh, it's just not there, right? So the S&P um, basically moving towards the lower end of the range should be an exciting week next week um, <laughs> for sure. We'll keep an eye on the news over the weekend and see what comes out. But boy, you just kind of hope all these people just go away for a little bit, right? Just go, go, what do you play golf or what do you, what do you do there? You know, you, you play, play golf, have a good time. Uh, anyways, so uh, that's that one there. Um, S&P 500. Uh, retailers, re really in the focus uh, again here. You had Foot Locker report earnings. Not really good for them. Foot Locker missed on earnings. Weaker revenues overall. Uh, they didn't give any guidance, I don't believe, but the stock was down about 20%, breaking new lows. So you have weakness. You have a reason to sell the stock. You also had uh, a break of these lows here. So the day traders, technical traders, they all had a reason to short the stock today. Obviously, market support behind them to sort of push from the overall weakness in the market. So kind of understandable there. Uh, Under Armour was in the mix, too. Hit new lows as well. Gap in the news uh, reversed all of yesterday, 4.5%. Nordstrom, we talked about that one. That one reversed all of the intraday gains that it had yesterday from their earnings. And uh, so that's what you have there. Let's go over the individual sectors. You got crude oil. So crude oil working on this, they, they call it a descending wedge. Is that what they still call it these days from a technical pattern? Just basically I drew that there. It's basically the series of lower highs, lower lows that keep happening here. But now you've got a little support around the $50 area. So oil is lower because China's going to put tariffs on imported oil as well from the U.S. I believe it was like 5%. It wasn't anything major, uh, but it was 5% tariff on it. Um, already stuck at technical resistance there, so you already have people not interested in buying it. Now you have this new tariff there, and you think, okay, that's going to hurt demand a little bit, and therefore prices should be a little bit lower there. $50 is basically the support area in the short term. Looking at gold futures, you got gold about, up about 2% today. Actually, it was a pretty good day for gold. Um, if you want to use the GLD, whatever ETF you want to use, had a great day there. If you want to look into the individual mining companies, GDX did well. The price of silver did well. That's also on the scroller up above there. Uh, so not bad. Overall, pretty good. I continue to share this chart with you. It's not very exciting. I, I don't have another way to post it there. This is the 10 to 2 year uh, comparison there to show uh, the inversions when they happen. We were inverted for quite a while today. We basically finished flat. You can see up there, it just went by. Uh, the 10 to 2s are basically flat, meaning they're trading at the same price there, uh, basically. And um, I would say for the most part, it is safe to say they are officially inverted. Yesterday, they officially inverted um, to actually close there, the bond market closure. So um, not great if you're looking at that. Semiconductors got hit the hardest out of, well, pretty much every sector here today. I continue to leave this trend line here. If you're a technical trader, we've been talking about the idea that if this goes higher, how much further do you expect it to go? It never really got to any support. You wouldn't attract as many buyers. Uh, this reversal today brings it well, ever so closer to that trend line. I think you wait. Like, I, I, if you're thinking about looking into semiconductors, obviously today with the news, there's no need to do anything. I think you wait and see how we handle this support down here because every technical trader is going to be looking at that. There's really nothing new here in terms of uh, sort of suggestions or uh, observations, things like that. I, I think you look at that trend line there. If we look at transports, they had a rough day today too. Back to the 10% pullback area. So they had pulled back 10%, bounced perfectly right off that 10% earlier this week. And today they came all the way back down to it. So if you feel like, oh man, I wanted the, the transports. I like a 10% discount. How do you feel about it now? Coming back there so quickly <laughs> continues to be a sector that's out of favor. If you look at things like FedEx, it almost broke to new lows today. FedEx very weak in general. Uh, in Norfolk Southern, one of the uh, rails inside of the uh, transportation sector there, also weak on the day. Those two make up about 20% of the overall sector. So you, you got some real weakness in the short term by the big players in that space. And that's basically it. Uh, utilities, although they were weak today, still weaker by less than the rest of the sectors. So that's got to be noted there. There's people still wanting to stick with those areas. The selling pressure from everyone who's been long in REITs, 
right? They've been long, long, long. Everybody's excited. These REITs are doing so well. Even though today pulled back one and a quarter percent, that's actually not that bad. It's about half what the market did, so or a little bit less than half of what the market did. So you kind of look at that and you say, well, it's not so bad. You can tell that people are still willing to stick with that area. Also, consumer staples, same thing. Weakness today, but not as bad as some of the areas in there. Cyclical areas. Oh, boy. Cyclical areas got a little bit beat up today. We've been talking about the materials. We've been talking about energy. You guys know that one already. Financials in there. If you like those discounts in the different sectors, you like to see money rotating into these areas. Just didn't happen today. Uh, that was basically, uh, well, it was just a weekday overall. Unfortunately, <coughs> excuse me, the Russell 2000 has now lost more than 1% four weeks in a row. So the markets, uh, S&P, NASDAQ, and everything, they're down four weeks in a row, but the Russell has lost 1% uh, or more in the last four weeks. It is now um, lagging the S&P 500 performance-wise, the most it ever has in 10 years. So the Russell 2000 continues to be pretty weak there in the short term. If you like discounts, that's a sector you're looking at going, I see the weakness. I see it. It may not be time to strike yet or maybe not even time to start building a position, but you see that weakness there. You expect to see that thing lower moving forward. We'll keep you posted on that one as well. Uh, what else? A couple other things and we'll take your questions if you have any. Yeah, 32 new 52 week highs today. That seems like a lot. 32 52 week highs. Every single one of them reverse course and turn negative on the day besides into it. Almost all of them lost 1% or more. So even though they made 52-week highs, that tells you they poked up there, they reversed course, left a big tail, uh, topping tail there, if, you're, if you follow those sort of things. So here's one of them, extra storage space. Poked up to new highs, then left that topping tail behind. Not really all that exciting. A couple other REITs were in the space there, did the exact same thing. Look at that, just poking up to highs, leaving a topping tail behind. People see that as bearish in the short term, which is okay. We've gone over the stats as far as having REITs pull back would be totally acceptable if they did. You also had utilities in there. Um, oops. There you go. Nextera Energy uh, hitting new 52-week highs. Um, WEC hitting new 52-week highs, but again, all pulling back on the day. You had 38 new 52-week lows, and these were brutal. Stocks that made new 52-week lows today. 32 of the 38 lost 3% or more. It, so they didn't just lose a little bit and, oh, it's a new low, that sucks. It was 3% or more, 32 of 38 of them. All but one of them lost 2% or more. So that basically tells you every one of them besides one was down 2% or more. Most of them down 3% or more. Wow. That's pretty nasty. Okay, uh, moving forward here, we've got uh, some interesting stats. We talked about the Jackson Hole performance, the stock market's performance the day of and the day after, which is a Monday. This officially will be the worst performing performance for the S&P on the day of the Jackson Hole meeting. However, I think it gets an asterisk. I think going forward, we'll look back and go, yeah, but it was up during the day, and then Trump said something. And then years from now, we'll go, yeah, it was up, but remember the president at the time? He tweeted out, Twitter, what's Twitter, right? <laughs> but... Uh, it, it'll get a little bit of an asterisk in there. So yeah, that's that one. All right, if you go, Dustin, I'm a little bit worried. Um, I think I'd better invest in companies that generate all their revenue here in the U.S. so I don't have to worry about these tariffs going one way or the other. Ran a little list for you here. It's uh, actually a decent sized list. I'll name off a bunch of stocks and just kind of tell you which stocks get 100% of their revenues from uh, the U.S., just all here in the U.S. and they have no exposure uh, well, most of them have no exposure. You got Advanced Auto Parts, Auto Nation, Auto Zone, Chipotle, of course. Chipotle doesn't have any stores anywhere else. Yeah, uh, Dollar General, Dollar Store here, Dick Sporting Goods, although they do get stuff from over in China. Uh, Dollar Tree, Dunkin' uh, Dunkin' Donuts or Dunkin' Brands, Nordstroms, Carmax, Kohl's, Lennar. It's a home builder. They only build here. Uh, Lowe's, Macy's, Madison Square Garden, because really, yeah, well, you get that. Uh, O'Reilly, Pulte Homes, Ross Stores, Sprouts Farmers Market, Extended Stay America. Honestly, didn't know that was a public company. Extended Stay America. That's a first. Okay. Uh, Target, Toll Brothers, uh, and Tractor Supply, along with Ulta Cosmetics, Yum Brands, believe it or not, because remember, Yum Brands split. The, they have Yum China, and then they have Yum Brands US. Uh, I believe Yum China is also more than just China. But anyways, that's them. Um, and that's it. Darden Restaurants gets almost all their uh, revenues from here in the States. Apparently, a half a percent comes from somewhere else. So that gives you a little list to work with. Uh, Dividend-wise, you got Johnson & Johnson, uh, Scott's Miracle-Gro, 
which was down big today, uh, and um, Skyworks. You got 95 cents, 58 cents, 44 cents. If you happen to own any of those stocks, we happen to own a couple of those in our funds here. So uh, dividends coming your way. Other than that, let's take a look here. Facebook, the Financial Times says uh, that the early backers of Libra cryptocurrency was like MasterCard and some of these big companies uh, are now dis distancing themselves. So we'll see. Now, I remember they're doing the Libra uh, cryptocurrency thing, apparently uh, getting a little pushback from some of their early backers there. Uh, Ross Stores, we reported that one. They lowered their guidance, uh, so that stock was lower on the day. VMware, uh, oh no, what was I thinking there? Uh, Hewlett Packard. Hewlett Packard beat on earnings. Revenues were okay, but the CEO resigned, uh, so stock was significantly lower there. And Hasbro, if you're familiar with overseas cartoons, Peppa Pig, the company that runs that, Hasbro is buying them out for billion dollars. I'm in the wrong business. Wrong business. I got to start drawing. All right, let's take a look at your questions and uh, see if I can help you in any way. Otherwise, we'll wrap it up there. Uh, <laughs> your favorite days when the market goes down. You only made money on five stocks, loving the discounts. Keep it going. I would continue to say if you like discounts, uh, you probably are not in any hurry, right? This is not one of those days. Actually, I had zero customers call today and say, any chance I can get a deposit in so we can buy something? I think they know better, right? This is just maybe the start of a little bit more of a drop there. Hopefully 10%. We'll see. Um, you guys know my personal preference. I hope we fall into wrap up the end of this summer, sort of flounder around a little bit, and then we can start that nice end of the year rally. Hopefully with everybody making peace, getting back together, and just sort of making things happen. <laughs> This will not end until Trump is out of office. He seems to be playing around with investors' emotions and enjoying it. I think today was unfortunate with some of the tweets there. Um, like I say, I'll, any president, I'll give him a good, you know, boy if you do something to help me with my dough, help everyone with their dough. I'll give you a little bit of grief if you do something to start screwing with our dough. I think he probably would want to do this one over again today, although he'd never admit it. I think he'd want to do that one over. Um, you know, you have this perception that the president is making decisions because he is one step ahead, or even two steps ahead, and that they're thinking long term. They're making a little sacrifice now to get something out of one side or the other, or even another country. I'm starting to lose faith that that's actually what's happening. You get the feeling that there is really no other plan. Uh, so there you go. I'm giving a man a little bit of grief today. That's, that's as far as I'll go. Everything else I, you know, I don't care about. Like the, We're going to start scanning every package for um, opioids and things like that. All right, yeah, we all want to do well. I, I think everybody could agree with that. but. If we start messing with people's dough and you don't have a backup plan, you better at least give us the hint that you got a backup plan, right? I don't know how you do that, but I'm not the president. <laughs> um, any expectations on what will happen next week? Um, I, I think the weakness today was the first time you saw people, actual investors, like the big people, say, okay, we don't know, right? Some people had their guesses, obviously their opinions, but I think today was the first time you, you literally saw in the market, you saw everybody throw their hands up and say, I got nothing, right? And so because of that, I think you see a little more weakness to the downside. I hope it does anyways. We'll see. Yep. Um, cool. You don't see an end of the year rally. You see the charts to repeat last year shaping up. I kind of hope that sort of thing happens before the end of the year, and then we can bounce off of it. Yeah, I hope that doesn't happen at the end of the year. That was sort of frustrating. But um, you just get the feeling that you're going to have some weakness here for a while, which is a great opportunity. People like to buy the discounts. Give them more than one day to buy a discount, because that's kind of been unfair, right? We've been seeing the markets fall, and then the next day, whoop, we've recovered it all. That's not really fair. Give me, give me something. Give me some time to put some real money to work down there. That's kind of how I feel about that one. Um, can't invest with your emotions. Look for good discounts, good deals. I appreciate it. Yeah, I can appreciate a comment like that. I'm right with you. <laughs> um, all right, well, uh, looks like we're all good there. We've covered everything here for the day. Uh, we'll wrap it up there. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend there. We'll keep track of, of course, the news. We'll be back on Monday to do this all over again. See what happens. It'll be an exciting weekend, I think. You guys enjoy the weekend, and uh, congratulations to Lindy B for winning Guess the Dow. Take your guess. You have until tomorrow, I think, at like noon or 1 o'clock to guess for next week. Otherwise, you got to wait the whole week. So get your guesses in there if you want to play, and uh, maybe you'll win the 100 bucks. Enjoy. Have a good weekend. Hey, wait. Before you go watch one of our other great videos, have you had a chance to see our new Fin Tips videos? 
They focus on one topic at a time, covering investing, personal finance, and anything that can quickly help you with your dough. Best of all, we'll keep it real short, because we know time is money. Why should you choose JazzWealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.